Hey guys, Cheryl from Thinker's Cart Art in the middle of a little techie glitch tonight. I'm not sure why, but um, StreamYard is not allowing me to go into my Facebook groups to do my video class with you guys. So I hope you find me here on the Tinker's Cart Art page. I'll wait a few minutes to see if anyone pops in because we are painting a really cute flamingo painting tonight. So I see people popping in. Let me know that you're here. Hey, Patricia, um, were you on one of the pages and, and my video did not pop up? Let me know. I want to make sure people get over here. We're going to paint our painting pretty soon. Um, hey, Linda, sorry about that glitch. Um, everything was set up perfectly. I usually use StreamYard and it allows me to go into multiple groups. Hey, Wanda. Hi, Andrew. So I don't know what the issue is, but it is not. It's allowing me to go on YouTube but it's not allowing me in my Facebook groups. Hi, Nance. Thank you guys for finding me. Sorry about the glitch. It won't be as fancy tonight, but I'm going to be able to turn my camera down. I'm going to wait and um, let people get in a little bit, talk to you for a few minutes, and um, we will get started. Hey, Brenda. Hi, Barbara. Hey, Sherry. Thank you, guys. I'm glad you're finding your way over here on the page. I'm going to pull you up on my computer, so any questions you have, I'm going to watch. Hey, Leah. Um, hey, Ernestine. You guys are great and flexible. We have to be flexible. Tech is not um, guaranteed. Mom, hey, babe. I'm glad you're watching, too, and Zena. So you guys are all right. You found me over here. I'm going to go and um, pull you up on my page here so you can ask me questions as we go along. We won't have the fancy two camera set up tonight, but we'll have a camera that you can watch and paint, and that's the most important thing. So let me just pull 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 myself up, make sure that everybody's getting in that needs to. Crazy. I have no problem with StreamYard ever. But of course, best laid plans, right? Hey guys. Hey Peg. Mary, you guys are wonderful. Thank you guys for your patience. And I'm gonna check into both groups and then I'm gonna pull you up on the Tinker's Cart art page. And uh, make sure you guys uh, can answer, you know, ask any questions you might want. Okay, let me get over to the main page now. And like I say, say hello and um, let me know where you're watching from. Oh, that's great. You know what? It's so funny because we've done all these winter paintings. We've done snow and ice. And it's funny because I forget that, you know, all of us aren't in New England or in an area where we have snowy uh, wintry Christmases. We have tropical Christmases and beachy Christmases. Um, so I thought I better get outside my box a little bit and do some really fun uh, paintings. So tonight um, we're going to paint this painting. You guys can follow along. You are welcome to paint with me. You are welcome to watch. I know a lot of people like to watch the first time around and just take it all in, ask questions, and then the video will be available. I will download the video afterwards. I'll put a link to YouTube in all of the groups for you tomorrow. I'll send an email out too to make sure everyone gets it. Um, so you can paint this at your leisure. You don't have to do it now. You can do it anytime. Hi from Florida. Hi Joan, where are you in Florida? I just came back from Orlando. I go down every... Uh, very often. So my family is there. So it is kind of cool to have um, some tropical things. Yeah, Zina, that's right. You in Hawaii. I, I meant to tell you, I was in Florida and a couple of weeks ago, I met my sketching group there and their Christmas tree at the restaurant we were at was a pineapple. I'll put a picture in the group. Um, so they got the tree wrapped in like netting. So it's shaped like a pineapple. It was really the coolest thing. You would like that with your, for your Hawaii theme. Um, oh, New Smyrna Beach, nice. Any place by the beach is nice. So who's ready for Christmas? Five days away. I can't even believe it. I don't know where the fall has gone and then December has been here and it is um, just crazy how fast time goes. But let me tell you what we're going to do. So I had the tracing um, in Dropbox for you. If you didn't trace your pattern on, don't worry. This is not a hard painting. You could sketch this on. Um, we just have a horizon line. A little beach line, simple little tree. These little guys are little ovals. If you are um, needing help with just drawing on your shapes as we go, put a um, put a comment in. I'm going to show you the colors I use, but I'm a big um, proponent of mixing your own colors from your primaries. Now I have my favorites too that I have a million colors here. Like we all go into the store and want to buy all the colors. But I try to tell you, you know, what the color is and then how to mix it if you only have your primaries or a, a, just a small selection of pinks. So, um, oh, Shelby, I don't know how um, you got removed. Um, but message me later and I'll make sure you're back where you should be. Um, I'm streaming this class right now live on Tinker's Cart Art. So anybody who's just popped on and saw me there, that's my business page. 
the business page for me is kind of like my business card. It shows you some information about me, where to find me, what I do. I have a free group called Learn to Paint with Cheryl, which a lot of you guys have just joined and welcome. That's a group, a free group where I do tutorials. Sometimes I do paintings. Um, you guys can network in there. We've got a lot of people encouraging each other. Um, and then the other group is my Cardist group. So I have a paid membership as well. In there, you get a more organized um, uh, space. And we do three and four paintings um, primarily for the um, membership there primarily for you guys in you know um special paintings uh that i do just for my group tonight is my cardist group but we are inviting the learn to paint people in just as a little christmas uh peek behind the scenes um and i am going to like i said make this available so if you're watching you don't have to sit and stay the whole night you could get the video tomorrow so anyway so this is what we're painting tonight i'm going to move the camera around because you really don't need to see my face all night i'm going to put my uh reference painting there i'm going to spin you around so hold on it's like a roller coaster ride um and i will position this properly so that you can see everything and then we'll start um and i'll start with showing you my paintings uh my colors rather and I want to position you properly first. And it's just a little, it's a little more awkward this way. That's why I like to go through StreamYard usually. I can really see you guys and I can see um, how your view is of the painting. But I think you can see that now. If you guys have trouble seeing with anything or you need to see something special or up close, you let me know and I can move the canvas closer as we go if there's some little details that you um, want to see up close. All right. And thank you guys again, and I apologize to the, for the uh, last minute s switch to, uh, to this page. But you guys all follow instructions really well, so um, you're here. Okay, I know it's a little hard to see right now because it's white, um, but once we start painting, you're really going to see um, what we're doing. Okay, so my colors. I'm just using the, the little two-ounce craft paints. Any acrylic paint at all will work. If you have the tubed paints, if you have the craft paints, whatever you have, acrylic will be fine. Um, the color palette that I'm starting with, uh, white and black basics. I put out a couple of browns for the palm tree trunk. I love these three colors. I use these colors a lot. You could certainly, um, Get away with just your cad yellow or a primary yellow and this is a phthalo blue like an ultramarine blue a dark blue you could mix your blue and your yellow and get your green but i love this phthalo green it's a really deep i know it looks blackish there but it's a very deep green and i use that and mix up all my shades of green pretty much with these two colors i have a little red I have an ivory and i have a yellow ochre two colors that i do keep in the bottle because i use them so much but again, you could certainly mix those colors up if you didn't have them. This is just a yellow okra. If you took your yellow, a little white, and a little brown, you could get that color. Um, so this is what I've got out. I've got an orange because I'm going to use a little orange on those little Christmas balls, the colors, the Christmas lights and the Christmas balls. And you know what I will add is a little silver because I do have, it, it's a little tiny bit of silver on the ornaments. And as I always like to say when I'm painting with you guys, you don't have to do it just like mine. You can do any colors you want. You could do a different sky, a night sky. You could do um, more uh, blue water than the turquoise water. It's all up to you. You can do grass down here if you wanted. I love to see you guys take the painting and make it your own. So this is, I'm gonna paint like you see it here, but feel free all night to do your own thing, which is kind of cool. Um, and again, I've got my comments up here, so. Uh, if you have anything, I'm going to keep watching them and, and answer any questions as we go as well. So let me just pull them through here. <laughs> Not ready. Okay. I start my paintings usually from the back and work forward. So I'm going to start with our sky here. This is a very basic sky. It's all one shade of blue, really. I've gotten a little lighter down here. I didn't put a lot of clouds or action going on in my sky because I really want you to focus on the design here. So my background is very plain. Then we're going to work right into the water. Since we'll have blue in our brush, we'll just hop right into this. And then we will do, um, we'll do our sand. 
then we'll start with what's closer to us. We'll do our tree and our little flamingo guys. So let's hop right in and start on our background. Any brush you want for this task. I really like these bristle brushes. I'm always telling you about them. It's just a, a long handled, so it's a you would find these in the fine art painting sections, the acrylic and oil painting sections. It's a bristle brush, so it has some, um, it, it's a little stiffer uh, brush, which I kind of like, especially on canvas. I can dig into the nooks and crannies and really mix my paint. But you can also use your acrylics, your synthetic brushes. This is like a one inch or a three quarter inch, whatever you have, that's fine. You can even use your handy dandy old chip brush. How, how well used and well loved is that? These little brushes are fabulous for so much when you're doing big areas. It has that bristly texture. It's great for making uh, all kinds of texture on your canvas. And look at, they, they cost about a buck, I think, at the dollar store or at Aubuchon's or the hardware store, craft fair, craft stores. So these are all any sort of brush that you could do your big areas in the back. And I'm going to start with, I'm just doing a light blue sky. I'm going to take just a little bit of blue. And I'm going to mix some white. And I'm just going to get a lighter shade of blue that I like. And I'm just going to start at the top. Can you notice that I'm doing sort of crisscrossy strokes? I just think it looks a little more natural. The acrylic paints lots of times are a little see-through, a little transparent. You know how you have to put a few coats sometimes. So when it's got a texture to it like this because of the brush strokes, even if you can see through it, it looks a little more natural than if you were doing this and you you know, had like um, streaks and things. Again, I'm going to tell you how I paint, show you how I paint, um, but it's it's not a hard and fast rule. I'm not the boss of you guys. You guys can do whatever you like to get the effect that you want. So we've traced our design on here. So I'm going to just a little bit go in between here. I'm not going to be super duper careful about tracing every line. I just want to know where a little frond of the palm tree is going to be. And then when we paint the green, we can just come out a little more. So I'm not going to be too terribly concerned and take a lot of time now outlining everything. You can almost see, you actually can see right through, if I, if I do cover a line, and I am, you can still see it through there, so that's fine. I'm going to go around these guys, but I'm not, again, wearing the darker color for the ornaments. We can round them out and cover later. I tend to work a little quickly in my skies because I want to blend all the paint wet and wet and get a nice smooth look. If I was being really careful in outlining now, I would do that first and then paint the big bits so that I could blend like this. I love to work wet and wet. We are working in acrylics, which as you know, dry pretty quickly. I'm, a, I'm also an oil painter and I love the, the fact that I can blend and blend and um, have time to finesse it and get it the way I want. So what I do when I'm doing when I'm painting in oils is I'm really trying to make the acrylics act like oils. So I paint a little quickly sometimes in order to blend. Um, I will be doing more little tutorials and things about blending, but I will show you as we go tonight. So if you are painting along with me, just work on your sky. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be finished. You could get some in and fill in your sky later if you're running a little behind and I'm going to jump into painting something else. So don't worry. This is just background stuff and it's pretty easy and you could do that certainly on your own. And I, as I go, I didn't mix up a big pile of perfectly um, mixed light blue. I'm just taking the blue into my white as I go. It might mean that there's a little bit lighter and darker areas, which is kind of cool in the sky. But can you see how this paint is still wet a little bit up here? And I'm able to go in and sort of blend. If the color's a little off, if I blend it with what I have there already, it's going to look perfectly fine. And I know this is sort of like paint by number, a busy work, just filling in these little bits. It'll be fun later when we get to our shading and, and the little details. I usually am trying to get the white of the canvas covered first. 
and it looks a little blocky and you know not much for shading and highlighting but then we get the white covered we've got our base colors on we've got a sufficient number of coats to get the coverage that we want then we can have fun with shading and highlighting adding the little christmas lights as we go all that fun stuff i'm going to switch to a smaller brush down here to get around my guys but i'm going to fill in whatever i can with this big brush because it just is a little speedier how many people are painting along with me tonight all right a lot of you just watching and going to paint it later and remember, you will get the replay too. To, uh, I'll download this tonight and I will get that up on YouTube. And I will get a link posted in the groups as well as an email out to everyone. If you are not on my email list, just send me a message with your email and I will make sure you're on the list and you will get the replay. So sometimes when I give you the pattern to trace, Every little tiny detail does not have to be traced on. You just want basically the outlines of the things you need to fill in. You can see that I'm not being too, too careful, but I can still see where my trunk's going to go and where my fronds are going to go and basically where the little circle ornaments. Look at this guy, I covered all together, but I can see right through my paint there, so I'm not going to worry about that. A great little tool to have with you is a piece of chalk. Just ordinary chalk, white chalk, because then if you lose something, you can sketch it in. Or if you if you painted this whole sky blue, say you just did it all blue and you're going to sketch your design on, you could sketch it right in with some white chalk. It's great because you're not tied into it. If you make a mistake, you just wipe it off and you can start again. Oh, hey, Charlotte, you got the kids there. You guys will all um, be together to to watch some painting and maybe paint with them too. You've been doing some fabulous things um, lately. Thank you for sharing them. I love seeing your painting and your progress. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is switch to a littler brush so that I can get in here. Um, although, you know, I do wanna make it a little lighter here. So say we want just a um, blue sky, but the horizon we want a little lighter. I'm just gonna take that brush I was using just put a little bit of white down here. The good thing about when your paint is wet and wet, it almost blends by itself. You don't have to struggle and try to get a blend there. You see, I've just gone along here with some white, and then I'm going to just dry this brush off. I have too much paint on there. I picked up the blue. I just dry it off now. I use the dry brush a lot and just softly feather it and just softly blend it. Isn't that nice? It's just got a little bit lighter uh, down to the horizon. And you can just keep making it even brighter if you want. I just wanted just a little bit lighter there. That's all. Okay, so now I really am going to go. I'm gonna get a little smaller brush and I'm just gonna use these synthetic brushes now. You could use a little round brush, which would be fine nice point you can outline with that you can use a little filbert i'm just using whatever happens to be handy here and i'm just going to go in and go around my tracing and just fill in the white area it's going to be the sky but it's white here but i don't know Oh, hey, Linda, thank you so much for the calendar. I love it. Linda sent me this gorgeous calendar from her little town of Baldwinville, New York. And I was so excited to get that in the mail today. Thank you. And welcome to all of our new people watching. Your first night and we've got all kinds of techie glitches for you. Isn't that great? I just try to work and roll with it. Um, but usually I'd be through uh, StreamYard, which means I could have my painting up and a little bigger view of it, and then myself a little tiny view. And it's so odd because I know I can't really see you, but when I have my face there, I somehow feel like you're right here painting with me. So tonight, I don't have that, but I know you guys are there. So, And I can keep glancing over at the Facebook page and uh, check in and see if you have a question or anything. And as always, if you, do, if you don't have a question now, but you're painting later and you have a question or 
want to, you know, show me your painting and have a little, you know, critique or something, just send it to me, um, direct message me. It, I'm happy to take a look, help you if you need something to be fixed. If you just have a question about something, if I new, need, need to, I can jump on and do a little live video for you, you know, showing you a technique or something that you might not be sure of. I'm very accessible here and um, love to paint with you and help you paint. I'm getting a little light there. But let's just get this all filled in. I do my skies with lots of clouds usually, and we've done cloud tutorials and that sort of thing. But like I said, this painting has enough going on in this part of it. We don't really need a lot of clouds. So I'm keeping it a little simpler so that we can focus on the little flamingos, the Christmas lights, the palm tree. Have this little brush I can kind of go around the bits and pieces a little better. As the paint dries you might see little bits of, especially with the nooks and crannies of the canvas, you kind of miss some of those little places and you don't really notice it. I've got something stuck here. Um, until it dries. So that's going to happen. That's no, nothing you can do about that. Just when it's dry you can just pop in, you have your palette, you can grab your color and just fill in any little areas that you might need to. This is a great design for a Christmas card, too. I know it's getting late. If you're like me, you don't get your Christmas cards out till the last minute if you send them at all. It's been, it's so funny because I get cards from friends and I don't even want to open them. I feel so guilty if I haven't sent mine out yet. But this is a great design for a Christmas card and a super easy way to do your own Christmas cards is finish your painting, take a photograph of it, do it with your cell phone, do it in like a shaded, put your painting in a shaded area, maybe outside in the shade and take a nice photo and, and your cell phone photo is fine. And then you have prints made. You could do it at, you know, CVS, anywhere, four by six prints. And then you can buy a package of blank cards. They have them at all the craft places in Walmart and Hobby Lobby. And it's a pack of 25, usually blank. It's almost like an off-white textured, almost looks like a watercolor paper, a little bit textured cards and envelopes come with it. And all you need to do is double side tape your little photo on your card. You can sign your name with a little technical pencil or a fine marker. You can put the title there. And you will really impress your family and friends with your artistic abilities because they're gonna think it's so cool that your painting is on their Christmas card and they will probably frame it and keep it forever. So it's really a easy little way to make your own cards. It doesn't have to be just Christmas cards, it could be any card occasion, birthday, paint a picture of a birthday cake, and that would be fun, or paint our flamingos with a birthday cake. So many ideas. Um, okay, that is a little wishy-washy. It's not as smooth as my sample, but I would um, just go back and, and do maybe a second coat or finesse it, but I just want to get painting the really important bits for you tonight. And so now, and you guys can see me, right? Let me know if it's if the view isn't good. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's... um. Needs to move a little bit. I want to make sure the whole thing is in. Uh, the ocean water. I love painting the ocean, and it is so easy and quick. Now let me show you what I am going to do. I like a, a kind of a tropical um, looking ocean, so I've gone more blue green. If you wanted to do really blue, like I said, you could do that too. I'm going to go and use that same big brush I had because it has blue paint on it, and we may as well use it. And these two colors are fabulous for the ocean. So I take a little of that phthalo blue, a little phthalo green. I'm just going to mix it. It's going to look super dark to start, but I'm going to just put it where our horizon line is. That I just, that color is just is just so scrumptious. I just love it. And I just want to get the water in there quick. And then when I put some white highlights and white white caps and things, it really is going to change it. So I'm getting that dark in there. Can you see how you can see, you can see the green, you can see the blue. I don't want to mix it too much because I like to have those different areas. I just want to fill it in to start. And here I am using a stroke back and forth. Whenever I'm doing water, you might as well use that back and forth stroke because that is going to 
give you, um, you know, the texture of water and just look more water-like. Okay, so I'm going back and forth, and what I'm doing is just getting those two colors on there. I want to dry my brush off again because I'm going to add my white, but I don't want to have too much blue-green in there. So just wipe it off, same brush. Don't wash it in the water. You don't want it to be really watery. I want it to be dry. So I wiped it off, and now it's easy as this. Tiny bits of white. I'm almost using, I get my wide brush. I'm using it almost on the chisel edge. You see, I'm going back and forth here. You could certainly use any flat brush you have. You could use any brush you, you have, but... Because this brush is so big and I cannot get a really good control, that's a good thing. I don't want to be with a tiny little liner brush making each little line. I don't want to get it that particular. This forces me to be a little looser. I know some of you struggle with painting loose. This is a good way here. Um, use a bigger brush so that you cannot get all those tiny bitty details in. I will use a little finer brush later to get maybe a few little lines around where their feet are in the water and then we have a little reflection. But for now, that looks, that's pretty decent and quick little way to do any little bit of ocean in a painting that you're doing. If you have a little strip of ocean, you've got some greens and blues and then those little whites. Another tip too, if you want to get some lines but you don't want to get all, you know, fine line or, uh, I love my flat brushes, they're wide, but you can get a pretty thin line on your chis chisel edge. And again, because it's a little bigger, you're not getting so detailed. This is far away. You're not gonna see perfect little lines, but if you want to get a little more, you could just certainly go in, white paint, flat brush, and you can just throw in a few little lines if you want with that, if you're more comfortable than a big wide um, filbert like I was using. And that's it. So look at how easy. Just painted a blue sky in. The blue and the green for the water. Now you can use whatever blues and greens you have. Use the darker green that you might have, a darker blue, and then mix it together on the on the on the painting so that you're not getting a perfect shade. You get some lights, darks, blues, greens, like you would when you were at the ocean. And when you throw those highlights in, that really makes it look like a little bit of waves coming in, but it just makes the water more interesting too. So what we're going to do now is work down onto our sand. And what's great about this is it's not like a real realistic painting. We're making it look a little like sand and a little like ocean, but we're having fun with it. We're just going to use our big brushes and, and make that sand look kind of like it's just a little bit walked in and some highlights and whatnot. I'm looking at your message, Zena, about outlining in that. That's a good idea too. I sometimes don't want to have it so dark that I can't cover it, but there is. But but that's a good idea with a little fine sharpie. You could, um, and paint right over it. Another ideal situation if you were painting this, you could paint your whole blue background when it's dry, then trace your design on top of it. That would save you going in and out to all the little bits. I like to do it this way because most people are are tracing it on and then painting in with me, but if you were doing paintings and you had big expanses of skies like this, you don't really have to paint around all your details. I would paint the whole thing and then sketch or trace right on top of it. So I am going to now rinse off my little brushes. Um, you want to really take care of these little acrylic brushes. They're, they're not expensive, but they'll last a long time if you really keep uh, take care of them. My bigger um, brushes are a little more hardy, and I will put that in water now because I don't need that color anymore, but sometimes I leave them and go back and forth into the colors. But make sure you take good care of these little acrylic brushes. They sit for just a little while, and the paint hardens up in the ferrule, and it's a little difficult um, to get it out, and then your brush doesn't keep the nice shape. So the little extra care that it takes will keep them in shape for you. After your painting, you can take a bar of ivory soap, and just rub your paintbrush over it wet and you can see all the paint that's still going to come out when you think it's clean or dawn dish detergent or something in the palm of your hand wash it put a little soap and you'd be surprised when you think you have a nice clean brush and what's great about that is the soap will act as a sizing so you can just put it back into shape and your brushes you will your brushes will thank you oh barbara okay so the water i just did with my big brush the blues and the greens while it's wet, I went right in with my big brush 
Let me show you. I'm going to show you both brushes I use. This is the brush I just kind of washed off with. This is a big brush. It's wide, but I used it on the chisel edge, and I just took little bits of white, and I just ran it through. And if you run it through the wet paint, it blends. It's kind of nice. It gives you some light areas. As the paint dries, if you add a little more, you're going to have a little bit higher, you know, brighter white. Or simply go in with your flat brush, and you can make some little lines that way, too. And remember, I will have the um, replay, so you can always take a look again. But I just run some white in there while the yellow and um, yellow, blue and green are still a little wet. Okay, the sand color. This is why I use a lot of my ivory for, is this ivory for the sand, this for some shadows. Sometimes I throw a little brown in. I don't know if we'll need to, but let me grab another brush, and we will do um, the sand. So I start with the ivory paint. And I'm just going to paint it all in with the ivory to start. Again, I put it in a little quick so that I can use the wet paint and throw in some shadows and highlights while it's wet. And if you'd like, you can take your time with this. Paint it in the way you want, but then you might want to just re-wet it a little bit if it's dried so that you can have the wet paint to blend. So ivory paint covering all of the areas where we want sand. I just dry off my brush a little bit. Move my paper towel over because I do a lot, of, like I said, a lot of dry brushing. I keep a paper towel in my hand usually, or I use this one over to the by my palette, dry it off. This yellow ochre, golden ochre, just kind of a deep yellow is what I use to shade. Um, I don't want to take a big brush load of paint and go onto my canvas. I am taking paint, but I'm taking a lot of it off. And I'm going to just go in, and again, I'm using these little crisscrossy loose brush strokes, and I'm putting that in. Can you see? It's almost blending by itself. Because the paint underneath is so wet, it might get too light sometimes, but you can just keep adding more. And then how I blend it doesn't really need much, because like I said, it's really blending wet and wet. But anytime I want to go and blend now, I take my brush, I dry off the paint. I don't want um, to be putting paint on now. I'm just using my really dry brush just to finesse it and soften it and blend if it needs it. It might not even need it too much. So see how I'm going here just very lightly. As I pick up more paint, I get rid of it. I want to keep that dry brush. Kind of like you put it on makeup, you're putting on your blush. You're not going to put a big, <laughs> big big brush load on it on your face. You're putting a tiny, tiny bit, and then you're brushing it around and, and softening it. Same principle, same idea. And then I want to add some highlights, so I'm going to do that same thing with white. Same brush, dry it off. If the white blends in too much, we'll wait a minute, let it dry a little bit, but I'm going to just take some white, and I'm just putting it on here and there. I'm laying it on a little thick right now because I just want it to show up. And it's really just it's that simple. I think when it dries, I might go back with some white and dry brush it on top so it's a little bit brighter. But basically, covered it all with ivory while the ivory's wet. I took the yellow ochre, put, tapped it in, dried my brush off, softened it. You might not even need to do that if it blends really well. And then I threw some white in the same way, let it dry, and we'll add a little more white. But look, we've got our whole background done now. Here we've got our sky done, our water, and the base where the, where the um, sand is. So, are you guys, let me know if you're painting along and how you're doing keeping up. Um, I'm going to just check in at the other pages because I am so afraid of some of my people being lost and not finding their way here. So I'm going to let you uh, catch up for a minute. I'm going to just quickly look on the other pages and then we'll come back and we'll start on the palm tree, which is so much fun doing these guys. Wait till I show you how much fun that will be. I'm going to keep that brush there and let me just quickly look in the groups and let them know that we are here. We were courting here, so who we're here, we're here.
we do have some people that are looking for us. So let me let them know. It's so hard when you depend on some of these techy things. Um, and there's just no rhyme or reason, you know? It's just, I don't know. It's just frustrating. Let me just make one more look in the other group. Okay, I think a lot of you that I'm answering might have, might have found your way here, thankfully. Um, but, anywho, okay. Oh, Diane, you found us. Yeah, I was just saying that. I think it is easier, like, to put the background on first and then you can trace or just sketch it. Because if you're sketching this on, you would have just needed your little horizon line, a little bumpy line here for the sand. This guy, just a line. If you just drew just a simple line, we can start thin here, work a little thicker. These guys could be sketched on simply as a line. Um, if this was all painted blue and you just did your line, we're going to, with the paintbrush, paint the little fronds. So you really don't need to have a lot. Little ornaments we can add after. These little guys really you could just almost do like a little oval for their bodies. Their legs are basically sticks. And then just like a little S here for their heads and necks and then little hats. So we can work on that as you go. It doesn't have to be traced on. Um, so thanks for finding me. Okay, I am going to paint the trunk of the tree first. I'm going to use burnt umber. A lot of times my burnt umber doesn't seem to cover as much as I'd like, so I may add black to it. Can you see I added a little bit of water to that paint? See how thick it is just for the little time we've been sitting out? It's almost like pudding. I am uh, oftentimes adding a little water to my paint, especially if I am doing any kind of detail work. I would rather have it be a little thinner consistency like this and spread out and not be clumpy and thick and do a couple coats than do it really thick trying to get it to cover in one and then it just you will it, your, your your paint will will look bumpy it will be hard to get it smooth so I'd rather do a little bit of a smoother coat and do multiples acrylics that's just the name of the game we have to put multiple coats because it does um it is see-through a lot So let me just fill this in one coat and then we can always add another. And remember to let it dry before your second coat. I know we're impatient sometimes, but if you go ahead and start putting your second coat on now while it's wet, you're really just taking off your first coat. So you're really just going backwards and you could always keep your hair dryer or heat gun handy and give it a little blast if you want to get it to speed it up to dry but what I do is I just move on to something else for the meantime and then come back and do another coat so this basically could have started out just a little curved line and then just got a little thicker as you got down to the base so let's let that dry a little bit I'm going to put in the base of my fronds there of my palm uh, leaves just as a guide really I start dark whenever I'm doing trees you probably see me do trees sometimes. I start really dark and I get lighter. So let's just take this green here. I'm actually going to even add a little bit of black to it. Sometimes I add a little black or even a little blue. I just want to get it even darker. I know it almost looks black, but it will be nice behind the brighter leaves. So for instance, here's the tree. I started very dark behind, got a middle shade of green, and then finished off with these really lime green. And this is the best part because those guys really pop because you're on a dark background. If it was a lighter um, background, you wouldn't have that great, um, the, the way that uh, really stands out. You wouldn't have that contrast in the dark and lights. I tend to paint really dark a lot of times to start and then lighten up. These palm fronds, they're just, if you were just painting it without having the design sketch, you can just make curved strokes. I just start with all the strokes like this. Even when I'm sketching it, that's how I started. I just start like that. I'm deepening this up a little bit as I 
go because I don't want it to be too see-through or too light. I love painting palm trees. They're so fun. So that's how I start. It looks a little spidery, I know, but that's how I start. And now I am going to start at the base of one of my little leaves. So here's my leaf. I'm starting at the base and I'm coming out this way. I give it almost a little press and I sort of lift my brush. So I get that kind of a zigzaggy, jagged leaf. And I start again at the base and I just kind of go out. I really like my flat brushes for fine lines. And I know a lot of times people will say, what one of their struggles is making fine lines. It's hard for them. Now, a couple of tips. Um, keep your paint really thin with water so it's like ink. You can get a nicer line. If it's thick and dragging on you, you have no choice. If, you, if it's thick and dragging, you're pressing harder. And then when you press harder, your stroke gets a little bigger. You're better off starting with a nice light touch. And I taking the... Um, I start with a light touch, but I, I'm a little heavier than when I end. So when I start and I'm coming along, I'm pulling it up. I'm, I'm pulling this right up off of the canvas. So you almost have no choice but to get a little lighter stroke. So if you're, you know, got your pe perpendicular, your brush, and you press a little bit, and you are lifting up off, look at the paint stroke has to get a little thinner. Same premise if you would rather use your liner brush, you know. Um, here it is. So if you've got a liner brush like this, keep your paint really thin. And you can do the same thing. You press a little bit and then you pull it up. These are heavier, so I'm using my flat brush. I don't need to have it that airy and that light. But just as a little demo for you to see how to make fine lines. Like, let me do it on here so you can see. I I'm going to make it thicker, but just because I know people have a hard time with a little thin, fine line little bit of pressure, ease up, ease up, ease up, pull the brush right off the canvas. So press, ease up, ease up, pull it off. Practice, it's not something that's going to come right away, but if you do enough of it, you can just almost do it in your sleep. Press and pull it up. If you're pulling that brush off the surface of the canvas, you can't help but get a thinner line. If you're pressing down and the paint's dry and you're pressing more because you can't get it to cover, that's when you're going to get a thick line. Um, but especially with these liners, press down and thick and um, pull up. Seriously, look at how thin that paint is. I'm using really thin paint. Okay, so I didn't want them that thin there. I'm going to go back to my thick brush, but I wanted to give you a quick demo on how to get those little thin lines if you wanted them. So now I am just going to go, and you can even bring some out on this side. You know how they're kind of jaggedy? I start at the top with the branch it grows out and I work that way uh, because all of the little little leaves will lay correctly. If you started at the end here, it might work okay for this, but for some things like like that you're doing hair and different things, you, you want to kind of start and go the direction that it grows so it doesn't cut off. You want your nice thin lines. You don't want them to really be cut off. So I just use that direction. You can bring these out. You can make these little uh, leaves as heavier, more thin ones if you like. I'm going to go back here because I have a lot of white showing and I was just kind of making that thin for the demo. So I'm going to keep adding a little black if I want to keep that dark shade. And it's going to be great when we get the next shade on, and then that lime green is going to be so cool. So I'm going to switch over here, but I'm always still starting at the base and just kind of going out. Has anybody else painted palm trees before? They're really fun. And again, as I go, I take a little water. I just want to keep that paint thinned a little bit. And 
and we've got this last little one here. I'm actually trying to cover a little white here, but I think that's actually one of my little Christmas balls, so I don't have to really worry. So that's the first coat. That's the base, the darker green. I want to let to have that dry before I put my second coat of green on. So I think we're going to pop back. And this is all dry now, so we'll do our second coat on our tree. And I'm bending it down again because that paint is really thick. And that second coat is covering perfectly. I'm going to throw a little burnt sienna in there. This is a burnt umber I'm using now. I've added a little bit of black just to deepen it up a little bit. Second coat is covering perfectly. There. Now, the palm trees have a little bit of a texture that I just replicate by some brush strokes kind of crisscrossing down. I may switch over to my filbert, just a smaller square brush. I'm going to go into some of the burnt sienna. And, and you see I'm just making a little stroke. It's blending in with the dark brown, which is great. I'm kind of just making a little stroke. So I'm going to go both ways like this maybe. Now, I do not mind if it goes out over the little trunk that I just painted because it, palm trees would have a little texture like that. They would have those little guys coming out. I know it's very light. You might not be able to really see it. It's just a little bit of burnt sienna just kind of coming down from each side. I'm doing it a little bit wet and wet. And I'm doing it a little quickly because I want to go with a little bit of white on top of it. Not too much, but I just want to lighten it up a little bit almost like little V strokes. I'm going to dry off that brush now. Not wash it, just dry it and take a little bit of the white. But again, it's a little bit, a little bit of paint, take most of it off. I'd rather have you go onto the painting here and have it too light and not even be able to see it than to have a big glob of white. And look at how far I can go with it. I just want to vaguely just hit these guys. Sometimes it's going to be on the darker brown, sometimes it'll be on the burnt sienna so you can see you get different shades remember we're having christmas lights wrapped around this so we don't really have to worry too much don't look at something like this and say oh i don't like it oh it doesn't look like yours it's incident incident in, oh, oh i thought i lost the government it's really not the most important thing it's just go give a little tree a little texture and a little extra colors so that is fine for what we want for it and I like the texture of the canvas and the dry brushing. You can see it gives you that little texture that a tree trunk would have. And my paint is oops, drying pretty quickly. I just dragged my fingers through that because I thought it was dry. Um, let's just clean that up. And it's just about dry enough to really go back with another coat of green. Look at the mess I've made here. See, we all make little messes and little mistakes. If you make a mistake, the paint is wet. Just take a clean brush into some water and look, you can almost scoop it right away. If it has dried and you need to remove it, you could try a little alcohol. Um, just ordinary, you know, alcohol and that will take the dried paint off for you too. So that's a little trick. If you get paint somewhere it shouldn't be, you can certainly just a little bit of alcohol and a Q-tip or something and you can take that right off. All right, so let's go and get a little lighter shade of green. You can probably go and get all different shades of green in your paints, but if you want, you can just mix lighter shades from what we're already using. This phthalo green with some yellow makes a beautiful makes beautiful shades of green. So I'm going to mix up just a little lighter shade. I really don't know until I actually put it on there if it's going to show up or not. So we're just going to try it, and if we need to, we'll add more yellow, and if we need to add some white to make it pop a little bit, we will. Same exact strokes right on top of what we have here. So I'm just starting again, and I'm just going in a little bit lighter green. It's a subtle change in color, but that's what I want. I want to build it up slowly. I want some of that dark to show through still. 
I'm just simply doing the same sorts of strokes on top of what we just did with that dark green with a little black in it. And right along each one. Oh, Tanya, thank you for finding us. I apologize. I do not know why. All my Facebook groups were disconnected from StreamYard, and it was, would not let me go on. So we are here. And, yes, I am going to download this tonight, and I will get it up on YouTube and give you a link tomorrow. And I will email it and put it in the groups. So thanks for your patience. And sorry you lost us. I, I didn't know. I thought jumping on live with just this page might have been the easiest and quickest way to get going tonight. And I will get on the, with custom support for StreamYard tomorrow and figure out why my pages are all disconnected. It was it was streaming for me on YouTube, but I was wondering why when I was went on live that um, you guys weren't here. There's only a couple of people. So I went out and into the groups and it was not streaming. Okay, so that's just our second go round. You can see it's already giving it a little bit of a cool look. I think it's time to go and get some of our flamingos based in. And I just mix up my pink for my flamingos with a little red into my white. You can use, of course, your color that you might have. But my palette gets messy enough with the few colors, so I don't need to really be getting too many more colors out. I just take a little tiny bit of red into my white, and you can get a shade that you like. Flamingos are a little more of a salmon -y color, so maybe just a teensy bit of orange, which of course you could have just taken some yellow into your red made an orange, but they're they're a little more salmon colored. So I, I like the way that pink looks when they when it's got a little bit of orange in it. And now I'm just gonna get color book painting them in. I'm just going to paint their bodies in, in the pink and we'll worry about the shading and highlighting afterwards. get them in. We're going to have like a little bit of a highlight on them, a little darker pink shadow that gives them dimension and form. They'll look rounded. Right now they're very flat, but it's just a necessity to have to fill them in first, make sure the coverage is good. All these little bits of things in my painting. I don't know where that's coming from. But... So just paint them in for now. Just with the pink that you picked, that you created or picked. So their bodies, like I said, are kind of like an oval. And then they have the little feathers that come out down here. Let's give this guy a body. Again, I'm dipping into my water every now and again because Paint is a little sticky. I really didn't get to do as many Christmas painting as I would like to have done, so I'm going to try to just keep painting some right into January, and then I will have a head start next year. I always say I'm going to do Christmas in July, get a head start, and that didn't happen this year. But Next year I think I'll do a big Christmas in July paint-a-thon or something. It might be fun. Think of how ahead of ourselves we'd be. Okay, so they're base-coated in. Their little legs are really pink, too, so let's just paint those in. I made them so they're standing in the water, so we don't see their feet now. They're they're just standing in. We will have a little reflection, but they just got these little skinny legs and these little knobby knees. So I might be I might be straying from the uh, tracing a little bit, but this is these this guy's got really long legs, but that's okay. He could be the basketball player of flamingos. 
I'm scooching this over because I'm trying to look at it in the video like you guys see it. I'm trying to get it so it's a little bit in the middle. I don't know if I keep cutting it off or not, but I'll keep an eye. I have a delay. You know, so when I'm painting with you guys, it's on a delay. So you have to look at it and then wait a minute and it looks like I really am going the wrong direction so let me go back this way and hopefully you can see a little better again so we got these little skinny legs skinny legs knobby knees and this guy's a little straighter in the water I will go back I guess I wasn't too careful I was doing the background in a bit of a hurry so we could get started so I go back later with my blue and touch it up behind his legs this give you an idea just how they're painted at least now I'm going to do they're going to have a little reflection of their legs in the water it's not going to be just a straight line but what I'm doing is the color that I'm using can you see I'm just going to like zigzag it a little bit and that we will put some little uh, circles of white that look like little rings but if you want to look a little closer, I'm going to skip a little space and then I'm just giving these little wiggly lines. So it's not a solid line, it's just back and forth a little bit. And that's just going to be the reflection of their legs. Um, they're going to have a little highlight and then a little reflect. Little reflect. Refre I can't say it now. Re reflection. The pink that I'm painting over the watercolor there is a little bit harder to cover we're not going over white like we did here so I'm going to do a quick second coat because the, it really has dried already so I'm doing a quick second coat of this little long-legged guy same here a little bit of a quick second coat I love their little knobby leaves I might exaggerate those they might not be quite so knobby I can see through the paint here quick second coat anywhere that it needs it just to cut for coverage You can see my pencil lines there a little bit, so we'll just do that. A little bit of coverage, and I'm going to actually re-wet it a little bit too, just so I can highlight with the feathers and, and all. But I can't believe he's gotten way too tall with a tiny little neck. See what I get for like freehanding him a little bit without falling my tracing. Anyways, there he is. Um, we need a little shading. I like to shade on the back side of the head. And then we're going to give them a little light shading in the front. I'm doing that with just some more red. So I've got my pink here, but look, I'm taking more red. Maybe just straight red. I'm going to take it to the back side here. A little darker under the wing, so we'll do a little darker there. Let the wing ends there, a little darker. Now, if my paint has dried, same technique. I'm going to just dry off my brush and blend it with the dry brush. If the pink is already dried and it's not blending for you, you can just re-wet a little bit of that. But that seems to be working fine. It could be a little brush, um, you know, a little painterly look. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended on this guy. I'm doing one at a time because I, I want to um, get this blended before the paint dries. I did the same thing on the back of the legs. I gave it a little bit of a highlight, uh, excuse me, shadow there. even a little bit on the reflection. And then I'm just going to do some white on top of that. I'm going to just wash off that brush because I'm going into white and I'm using red. So now I'm going to go in and use that same brush. I'm going to take some white. I'm going to go under the little chin and, and down the front. Dry off my brush and just see if it'll blend for me. Soften it a little bit, I think it's fine. And the little feathers are kind of fun. Let me skip down, just do that little bit of a highlight on the leg. Then we'll do the feathers. Now the highlight on the leg, which means we'll do just a little highlight on the shad, on the reflection too. So I just take a good brush load of white now because we're going to do those feathers. And I just maybe do a few little feathers coming out here. And I'm just starting at the tip here. I'm just going to make some white feathers. They're going to blend in with the pink, which is great. And if it blends in too much, which I kind of like it to blend in and be subtle like that, and then maybe make a few that are a higher 
you know, brighter white. And you can go back even after this is dry if it needs to and do a little bit brighter feathers here and there. I seem to have lost my highlight down the front here, so let's quickly just give that a little brightening up. And there we are. We've got one of our, our long-legged uh, flamingos there. done. Now, we'll go back to this guy here. And because I know I want to have it blend wet and wet because it's easier on us, I have a couple different ways of blending, and one is a wash, but let's just stick with the wet and wet for tonight so we don't get all confused. And what I'm going to do is just, this is pretty wet already here. The little face is kind of dried, so I'm just re-wetting it a little bit with the paint so that when I put that dark red on and the um, white, it will blend easier. I like to go back because I want it in just a fine area. I'm going and using the little uh, synthetic detail brush, round brush. Not, not too small of a detail, but as long as it has a nice point, you can get some fine lines. So again, I'm just going to go along the front edge, dry off my brush, and then just use that drying brush to sort of soften that. And then I'll go into the red. I know I did the red first last time, but just the red is dark enough. And you know what? I want to do a little shadow under the Santa hat. So let's just make that shadow under the Santa hat down the back of the neck. Actually, it would also have a little shadow maybe underneath the scarf. It would have a little cast shadow there, maybe there. Um, a little bit maybe under the, under the tail. Yeah, you can just put a little shadow. And now I'll go back and do the feathers that we had on the tail and on the wing. Again, just white. I go a little heavier for these feathers. And we'll just do some of these. Here I did them kind of flipped up. They can be flipped down. Give your little guy a personality, whatever you want for feathers. I'm starting towards the back side here. When I was talking to you before about having things flow the right way, something like feathers, say, start back here. And if, as I move forward, they're laying kind of a, a little nicer than if I started here and went back because then I would cut off some of them. I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll do a little tutorial one day on that. I, actually, I've been talking so much and doing so much white, I've got a little bit too much on there. Um, it's very white. It could be fine, but if you didn't like the way it looked, if it got a little carried away, you could just go back in with your pink that we used. And you could just put a little dark in here and there if you need to. I think they look fine. I've got to do my shadow on the back side of my leg. I'm just following the shape. It's just a little straight bit, a little curved bit for the knobby knee there. Again, throw a little bit in for the reflection. And same thing with the white on the other side. Just goes down the front. And it gives it shape and it makes it round. All we did was have a middle shade, add a little lighter shade of that, a little darker, and all of a sudden you get it to look a little rounded. That is perfectly fine for our flamingos. We just need to give them their hats and beak and maybe a little eye. When I'm painting animals or people, I like to get the eyes in there as quick as I can. They come alive then. Um, and they're actually beaks are, have a little pink on them too. It's very light pink compared to their bodies. So the top of the beak just gets a little bit of the light pink. And then the rest is black. So let's just get that little light pink in there. And let's give them some Santa hat and put their scarves on. That's kind of a fun detail. We'll go back to our tree and our ornaments in a minute. Okay, so the white little pom-pom in the trim is white on a Santa hat, but I'm going to do it kind of a gray-blue to start and then just dab white on top, and it looks a little more textured. And for the hats, they're just red. So what we're going to do is paint our hat in the red part. Let it dry, maybe do a second coat, and then we will, like we've been doing on everything else, 
give a little highlight and a little shadow and some bits. Hey, Christine, Christmas in July. Yes, we'll keep each other on task because I promised myself last year I did not do it. This year I am determined. We will get together in July in Maine and we will paint Christmas things. I think that would be so fun. So all I've done is just do their red hats. It's going to need another coat. Let them dry. Let's base in whatever color you want for scarves. You don't have to use the same colors I'm using. You can... Um, use any color you want. I did lime green and a darker blue here. You could do purple, you could do orange, you could do any color. I'm going to go with the colors I used so that it would be, so if anyone wants to do it that way, they can actually see me paint it. I mixed up my green and yellow again, and I'm just going to base in where that little scarf is. It kind of wraps around his neck, and it goes out a little bit further, so it's kind of loose on his neck. It's kind of cute. And this will just paint as the little scarf. Now, it's going on very transparent because it has a lot of yellow in it. Yellow is really transparent. A good way to cover anything you need to, like I can see the pink through a little bit, or if you're painting anything, say these balls, I might even just go back and paint them white to begin. Add a little white to anything and it really increases the opacity of it and it covers so much better. It will cover that little bit of red and pink that I'm seeing through. So that's the base coat for the green scarf. Now let's get a blue scarf over here. And when that dries, we will put some shading and highlights. Even though it's just a scarf, we still want it to make it look like it has form. We don't want it to be just flat. But let's just, we have to place it first and then get the coverage well, you know, a little covered. So that's that. I'm going to put on my second coat of red for my hats now. It is a lot of jumping around and back and forth painting when we're base coating in like this. That second coat will work, and then we'll give it the highlights. Now, there are little bits of beak that is black. You could go to a smaller, tiny brush if you want to. You could let this dry well and do that little black details with a um, paint marker or a Sharpie, even. My detail work. Paint is really thick. What are we going to do? We're going to add a lot of water to that paint and get it thinner. And the bottom of their beak, their beak's kind of curved down, and it just is black down there. But it comes up not as a solid line here, it's a little bit feathered. So I'm just going to feather my paintbrush like that, and then it has the little line there. So same thing, it's just this little curved down bit. But can you see how I am um, just feathering it on the back? And then I just put that little dividing line there. And they've just got little dots for black um, for their eyes and then a little tiny white highlight. So you can actually just give them a little dot. You do know you can also even use the back end. If you have a brush that has like a thin back end, you can also just make their little eyes like that with the little back end of a brush. Makes nice little spots. If you were doing something bigger or you want to put well, I did. I put dots on one of the scarves using the back of the brush like that. So I'll show you that in just a minute. We'll let that dry. We'll put the tiniest little white dot for the highlight. I know you need to put a little white highlight in your eyes. It makes them come alive. So even something as tiny as those little uh, eyes, even if you need to use a toothpick or something, you could just put a little white highlight in them. But for now, we're going to finish up their scarves. So I've got like kind of a lighter green here. I want to highlight it and shade it. So I'm going to take just the green by itself, the dark green. So where would it be shaded? Let's see. We'll do it on the edges here, coming in a little bit. Make it look rounded. The knot stays here. Or this, this guy is behind this one. So look, it will give him a little shadow there. Sometimes if it's a long ribbon or a scarf, you could also even do like little areas that are darker. And then we just need the highlights. So we've got a dark shadow and we'll do a highlight. I did the highlight in yellow, but again, yellow doesn't really show. So I'm mixing yellow and white together. It will be a little more opaque. I'm just going to go across the top here, maybe. 
the middle, so we have a dark on both sides. I know this is teeny, we're talking tiny here, but I'm going to put a little bit in the middle. Can you see it's starting to take shape? Now it's looking rounded. And that just needs some little polka dots afterwards. I didn't do a whole lot of shading on this guy, but let's take a little bit of blue. I'm going to just do a highlight on that. So it's already a dark blue, so let's get a little bit lighter shade of blue. So I've taken the same blue we've used. Just add a little white to it. And I'm going to make it a little bit, it'll be a little lighter in the middle here. A little knot maybe. I might have a little bit of highlight here and there. And that's going to get little stripes afterwards. The little dot I was telling you about in your eyes, just a teeny little touch of a little white, little white dot there. And when I'm painting like gray, a beard, say Santa's beard or Santa's hat, I do put a little underpainting instead of just doing white here, give it a little dimension. And an easy way to do that is take a gray, so I make in a little gray with a little bit of black into my white. Whenever I'm making a gray, I tend to add a little blue. I just don't like. Black and white gray, it's kind of dull, but you add a little blue to it, and it just kind of perks it up a little bit. Where the little trim is going to be white, just paint it in that gray. And then when we put the white on, because it's so light, it will pop, and it will look a little more natural. So we'll just, just paint in the little pom-pom and the little um, rim there in the gray. And we still do have to give a little highlight in the to the hat, but let's just do this bit first. So, so once that's done, I'm washing off my brush because I'm, when I'm going into white paint, I always wash my brush off. This can be done while that's even a little wet. I'm just going to dab on some white. So it's kind of like that texture of that fur trim. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing. You can certainly have little bits of gray showing. That's what gives it a little dimension. And just dab it on. on. There. If it looks too gray, you can just let it dry and do another coat or do it a little brighter in places, but I think that looks fine. I'm going to use the back end of my brush, or if you happen to have these little tools are good. A lot of people use these for the mandalas and the rock painting. It's like a little dotting tool. It's wooden handle. And it's got like two different size little dots. Uh, little balls, little metal balls on there. Those are great for making dots too. So I used um, just a dark green dot for my scarf there. Any combination of colors, remember again, you could do purple and orange would be fun and whatever color you would like. And that guy is done. That scarf is done. The other one gets little white stripes. And I just painted those all on. Oh, you know what I did on um, um, on the sample that I did first? I had this bit of scarf going behind his neck. This time it's going in front. You could do it any way you like. This one gets a little bit of fringe. I know you hardly see it. When I do fringe, I just make up some little dots and then some little lines. So it's just like a little fringe coming off. I know they're in the tropical weather, so they don't really need scarves, but it's a nice touch, right? So I'm going to just take and make a little bit of maroon. I, I usually just make my own maroon when I need it. The maroons I seem to buy in the in the bottles just aren't dark enough. So a little black into, into your red, you get some nice shades of maroon. And that's what I'm going to shade my little hat with. I know it's, again, tiny, and do we need to shade it? You don't have to, but it just gives it a little nicer look. I kind of shaded along the little edge. This little part of the hat's tipped over, so it's a little darker there. Same here, it's a little darker behind the little fur trim there, and I'm just going to do that. So it's just a little shadow. And then for a highlight, it's going to be a pink because I'm going to use my red and maybe just a little white. And it's just going to be a little brighter. Little maybe coming down. This little bit is kind of over here. Okay. 
I want it have, to have it blend a little more, so I'm going to go in just with my red again, just to kind of soften that a little bit. I want it to be a little lighter, babe. I don't want to lose my bright red either. That little crease kind of, I'm not loving the shape of that. Let's just do that and do this, make it not such a harsh look. So I think that's it for our flamingos. I think they're good. I want to work on our really light, and I'm going to throw a few more darks up in my in my um, leaves here. And I think what I'm going to do now, a good idea might be to make it easier for when we want to do our ornaments, especially the yellow and orange. Um, let's paint them white now. Let's just make them white as a base. When we put our color on, it's going to be a little brighter. It's not going to have that blue showing through. So where we have an ornament, we're just going to paint a little white circle. And I may do two coats of that. We'll see how it looks when it dries. But we'll get those in now, and then we're going to finish up the fronds of our palm tree. Let's see one of these guys. I've made my little leaves a little different shape, but there. So they're going to be just little ornaments. They'll have like a little silver cap on them like we see on our Christmas ornaments. A little circle. And we'll just hang them with a little line white. I think I did a little white line and then so that you could see it I just put a little line of black against it. Again, that could all be done with a fine marker, a sharpie, a paint marker. Some of these guys are getting a little bigger than they're growing. But they wouldn't all be the same size anyway. This guy I'm moving down because he was up here and you won't see him, so we're moving that down. I will go along later and touch up this this one here, nice big ornament falling down. I'll touch up my blue after. I know you can see some of the uh, white of the canvas showing through there, but that's okay. Let's see, there's nothing really at the tippy top. So there's that one, that one. There's a little one tucked behind here. You can put them wherever you want. If you want to put a lot more, you can. You can put some smaller ones, some bigger ones. Um, you can put one out here. I'm doing that many there. Um, now let's put the lighter bits on the palm tree branches. I'm going to go back to that just a flat brush again. I need it to really show. And because the yellow again is transparent. We used that light green last time, but this time we're going to add a little white. That's going to make it a little bit more opaque and we're going to be able to see it a little better. So this is a really light green color with a little white to it. And like I always say, I'm not going to really know what it looks like exactly till I put it on. So once I put it on, I adjust if I need to. I'm going to do the same strokes we did before. But can you see I'm not doing quite as many? I'm doing just a few. The white really makes it so you can see that lime green. And I don't want it to overpower. I don't make the whole thing lime green. I still want to see my other shades of green I've got on there. But And again, as you're doing these um, other coats of the greens, feel like feel free to like go right out over. You can go right out over your edges if you want to. I go back in with a little few dark ones at the end, too, just to get back to some of the dark if I've lost it. But can you see now, because it's so dark in the back and you've got those different layers of greens, this last light coat really pops a little bit. I don't even know if I need to go back in with any darks. I've got the darks showing through. I think it's good the way it is. And I can see my blue through those ornaments pretty good. So let's just quickly give them a little more white. And then we go on with our colors. They'll be nice and bright. And then we just have our little lights on the tree there. I'm trying to keep my painting right side up for you guys, but... Sometimes I have to, I don't want to put my hand in the wet bit, so feel free to turn your painting around. 
I'm painting flat, of course, so that you can see me. Um, you can paint flat or, or on an easel. If I'm painting, a lot of times I will paint it flat like this. It just is a little easier. If I'm painting outdoors and I'm plein air painting or I'm oil painting, I'll probably be on an easel so I can step back because you really can't be this close to your painting all night. Um, no one's going to look at your painting this close, and you tend to get focused on too many little details that the, the, the eye's not even going to see later. So even if you're sitting painting flat like this, try to step away and get back from it from a distance of four or five feet, because that's how people are going to view your painting. They're not going to be on top of it like this. Okay, so we have got pretty much everything done. These guys, we want to um, put our little silver tops on. So let me grab some silver paint. I think I was organizing my paint today, so I actually put it back where it belongs, but forgot to bring it out. So I just got like a little metallic silver paint. If you don't have it, you can really just use a gray because honestly, no one's going to really even see the shiny silver metallic look of it on these tiny little caps. And all they are is just this little shape here. Paint them in. I know you can't really see them, but I'm going to give these little guys, even as small as they are, a little shadow and a highlight. But just get them in there. It's just a little silver cap on the top of your ornament. And now let's figure out where... I am going to um, give a little sketch or actually, you know what I'm going to do to make it super easy? I'm going to just use a Sharpie. You could use a Sharpie or a paint marker. Do I have a black paint marker here? I love um, I love the paint markers for so many things. Um, I'm like a Sharpie. The paint markers actually have paint inside. You can see you shake them up. It's got this little metal ball to shake the paint up and it's a little more textured like paint would be, rather than the Sharpie is just very flat. There's different widths. I found this cool little pack of all colors, which is neat. And they're a fine line. And you have to shake them and like I said, get them started. It sometimes it takes a little bit to get them started. Or just a Sharpie if you have it. And what I'm gonna do is just draw on, it's just a little line that these little lights are attached to doesn't have to be um, any perfect way it's just a little line and if I think we I think if we put the little line in then we can just attach those little lights to it so I'm just going to kind of go around and they can go any which way and that's just going to give us a place to put the little lights do not fuss over it or worry too much about it it can go any which way it's just kind of wrapping around the trunk. And it's going to just, like I said, give you a place to put your little tiny Christmas balls. Uh, they're not balls. These are the balls. The little, the little Christmas lights. They're kind of like a little oval shape, really. And these guys are so small. I'm going to try to just put them on whatever color I want to use with a little white to get it to cover. And then I can always pop the color on again. So say we're going to do some orange ones here. That orange paint has been out and drying, but let's just get a little orange to start. Use any color you want for these. Like I said, you can get purples and I can mix some of my blue and red and get a nice purple. I might add a little white to it to get it to cover. And really, they're just going to come off any way you want them to. They're just really, I'm laying down, it could very well just be a little, press the brush down and just get a little kind of an oval. A little brush stroke. You can almost do a little brush stroke and kind of twist and lift and you get a little bit of a triangle shape. But they're so tiny, you really just need a little blob of color. Can you see I'm kind of just laying them on here? Um, they're sort of attached a little bit. That one got a little away from the line, but they're sort of attached to the line. The ones that are going to be on top of the tree trunk, especially yellow and orange, are going to be a little harder to see. So what I'll do is just make them really light. Mix some white with your Color and get them to show up. And they're just, like I said, coming off that little black line. They're on the tree, they're popping off the tree, and they're all different colors. So just go through your colors and use whatever you like. I would take whatever you have and maybe add a little white to it just to, so it's a little opaque. The white does wonders for 
for that. Now, the blue ones are probably not going to show up well on the sky, so I'm going to keep my blue little lights on the tree. And like I said, you can use any color you want. I'm just going through what I have here. And again, I'm going to use the color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it just to get a base so it will cover the background. We can go back over with the color if we need to, but you know, a little bit of a pink one won't be a bad thing. You can see I'm placing them and not really paying attention. Because they are reading as lights already, right? I did some lime green ones, which were cool too. So let's go right back in that color we were using for that last go round on the palm tree branches. And we can get some white, and that's going to be a good color. That will show up. Don't think about it too much, just put them on there. When we give them a little highlight after, it makes them look shiny and round. Just a little white comma on them. The most difficult color will be the yellow. Let's get our yellow and add a little white, and that will help it. If I can find some yellow that's not green, because my palette's a mess, so do as I say, not as I do. We have a nice, neat palette, but I have a big, messy one. And adding that white is going to help us get it to show up. So let's just put some yellow ones on there. I think that these are showing up pretty well. You can go and do a second coat if you find you need to on them. Um, but I think I think I might do maybe a second coat of the orange because they're very dull and it has sunk in. Maybe if I mix a little orange and yellow, it might be a little brighter. I might just go on the orange ones a little more. But the rest I think are fine. You look at yours, and if you like them, leave them. If you think they need to be brightened a teeny bit, you could do a second coat. And the only thing we'll do is add the little, um, I added a little base to them and a little white highlight. So that's good. We are almost there, guys. We are just about done. Let's do these Christmas balls up here. Painting them like we've done everything else. Painting them a flat color, a couple coats if we need to. Then we'll put a shadow on one side, highlight on one side. That will make them look rounded. And a little highlight with a little uh, white comma. And then they will look round. So, let me see if I can find some clean yellow. So see how bright the yellow is because we're going on top of the white that we painted? If we were trying to paint it on just on top of that, it's green. But because we did the white, it shows up really nicely. So let's just get rid of that so we don't need a green Christmas ball floating in midair. And we'll do a couple yellow ones there. So I think I did this little one yellow. Again, you don't have to copy the way I did them exactly. You could actually make them bigger and put names on them if you wanted to do. That would be kind of cool to personalize it. You don't have to be right in scale. This is just a little whimsical painting. It's not <clears throat> a realistic scene. So feel free to change the uh, sizes and the, you know, the proportions. Don't have to be accurate if it's just a little whimsical painting like this. Orange, I'm going to get some fresh orange because that paint has been sitting out and it's kind of been contaminated with other colors. So let's just make an orange, little orange ones. And here we're just doing whatever we need for coats. If you think it needs, it's streaky, we could put a quick second coat on them. See how the coverage is on yours. And do I have any questions? Let me know. I'm going to quickly look at the comments if you guys have anything at all. Pop them in there, or like I said, send me a message later on if you if you come across anything that you need help with. It's quick and easy to paint, and you could do it as a little Christmas gift still. You have time if you wanted to gift someone with a cute little painting, especially if they lived in the south. Alrighty, now I've got some blue ones, and I use the dark blue because the sky's blue. I, I debated using the blue, but the dark blue really did stand out kind of nice. See how nice and bright that is because, again, the white that's underneath it. I 
Okay, one blue one. We'll do a blue one over here. That one's a little shaped like an Easter egg, but so be it. And so the thing about, you know, I hear all the time, but my painting doesn't look like yours or their neighbors. My painting doesn't look as nice as hers. They're all going to look different. This painting that I'm painting right now, copying my own painting, doesn't look like my own painting. So don't try to get it to look like your neighbors or your friends or the teachers. You just want to have it look like yours. If you don't like something, leave it. Go away from it. Look at it the next day or the day after. You'll be surprised how it has improved, has it, how it's magically improved. Another trick is if you think something's a little wonky, take a photograph of it or hold it up in a mirror and it's amazing. Like when I even look at my painting here and on the video while I'm painting, I can see things that I might um, not love or need to be fixed. It's, it's, I don't know why it is like that, but it does help to, like I said, take a photo or hold it up in a mirror. And now we need a color for that guy. Look, at, why don't we just take, I've read on my brush, let's just make a purple one. Why not make a purple one? So now they're all done, except for their shading and highlighting. The orange might need a second coat. While I'm waiting for them to dry a tiny bit, I'm going to just take, actually, might as well use the paint marker. You can use the paint marker or a Sharpie, like I said, or your paintbrush. And I'm going to just connect them so they're hanging from a little string. They can have a little um, little loop there, too. I did little loops on mine with the silver. But let's just bring the string down first. If there's enough room for one, that doesn't really have enough room. Yeah, yeah, this guy's got one. I'm going to go ahead now with some white because those, that, those silver little caps, you hardly see them. Just kind of give them a little white line, a little white, white highlight on one side. It's barely anything, it's just a little thing. And a little dark on one side, maybe. So it's just a silver little cap. It's got a little black on the right, a little white on the left. And with this color on my brush, which is almost turning kind of into a gray now, this is very little and tedious. If you, if you don't want to skip it, you can. It's just a little, you know, the little circle bits at the ornaments on the top. It's painting its own little circles. And now we can shade them. So whatever color they are, we get a darker color on one side and a lighter color on the other. Let's go dark on the left. And why don't we start with our lighter one? So on the yellow one, I kind of just use a little bit of that orange, maybe a little bit of that burnt sienna. I just got a little bit of a darker shade. And all I do is to kind of like a little bit of a C stroke down the left side. Down the left side. It's just like a little C. I'm going to go back and soften it, but just for now, since we've got all three yellows, just a little C stroke there. So you can see, just uh, I just put a little C stroke, dry off my brush. I have a few, I have a little bit of time before it dries, and now I'm softening it. So it doesn't look so strong. It doesn't look such a harsh line there now. So just soften that a little bit. If it's not budging and it's dried, I'll just take a little yellow and see. I'm just softening it so it doesn't look harsh. And then the same thing on the other side with white. So get your brush clean because we're going into white. Take a little white on your brush. I'm going to do the same thing, only on the other side. I'm just simply with my little liner brush painting a white C stroke on that side. The white is going to blend a little easier. It's, it's more of the same color as the yellow. So I've got a good bit of white there. I'm just putting it on that side. And then with the dry brush, I'm just softening it. We'll do that last little guy. After a while, you get the hang of you know, you want to paint something special, something that, you know, you don't have a tutorial or a class on. Paint the object, get the base coat in, and then just give it a high light and a shadow. I wasn't super particular and correct on this one saying, okay, the light source is here. It would be the 
highlight here, shadow there, because my little guys, well, I, I kind of did them like both on the outside edge, but it just it makes them look rounded, and that was good enough for me on that um, one. So the shadow for the little orange is similar. It's probably the same kind of colors, kind of the burnt sienna and a little orange, and I'm just doing that little C stroke. If it if it doesn't show up, I'm just making it a little darker. I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to it now. That's what I mean is you can mix up your color, but until you put it on, you don't know if it's actually going to work. So I did uh, did it first. It wasn't dark enough. I add a little burnt umber. So I've just got the two C strokes there, and I'm just softening it. If it's dried, like look at that, it's dried, it's not budging, just simply go into your orange again and just kind of soften it doesn't have to be perfect. No one's looking this close and no one's looking under a magnifying glass at your bit. And that's the dark side. Now we'll get, I'm rinsing off my brush so I can get into like a nice, um, I've got my orange again. I'm going to mix it with a little white. So I want a very light orange for the highlight side. I don't want it to do it white. I want to have it a light orange so it doesn't um, pop that much. Okay, so I've got this one here. And again, I'm putting it on, it's not really showing. I'll just go back and add a little more white. It's just something that you, so you can see it. And uh, with the dry brush, we're just going to wipe it off. I'm just going back in and shading it. I'm not shading it, just softening it. If you lose your orange, it becomes brown and then just all white. It's kind of doing that on mine. Just take a little bit of your original color back in. You can go right in there on with it. It's no, no worries. Same thing now on your red one. We're going to use that maroon we made. We made a black into in a, into our red. We made a maroon. Left side, a little bit of a C stroke. That one you can really see well. Maybe that's a good one to demo. Dry off your brush. We don't want to have a harsh line like that. Just soften it a tiny bit with your dry brush. Dry off your brush again. Go to your next one and soften it. And a little bit of a pink. So the color that we used with a little white, which would be a little pink, is what we're going to highlight with on the other side. I'm mixing up a little pink. I don't know if it's going to be too light or too dark. It's too it's too light. I mean, it's not light enough. So that's why I am adjusting it as I go. Now that'll show up a little better. And here too. So that one's very white. And then we're just going to soften it. If it's not budging, that one is working a little bit, but if it's not budging, what do we do? We go just go back into the color and soften it. And then I have that, oh, the blue one's next, so we'll do the blue. The blue's pretty dark. In order to get a shadow color, I'm taking the tiny little bit of black in there. And on the left side, again, just that dark, dark C stroke there. Dry my brush off and just soften it a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing for the highlight on the right. Just a little bit of the blue and some white. So I'm just got a lighter shade. And I want that extra bright maybe because I don't want it to end up being the same color as the sky. So I'm going to go right into white. Let's try that. Right into the white. Right into the white. Try to soften it if I can. And if not, I'll soften it with some blue. That's working. And same here. Just soften that little line. Going back in with some blue because I'm kind of losing it. And when we put those little comma um, highlights in now, you're going to see how that really helps too. So we just have that little purple one now that I made. A little odd, odd man out. Get that. Get a little bit of a darker purple, a little bit of a darker bluey color on the left side, and soften it. And then the color I used for my little purple ball, I'll just add more white to it and get a light side there. Oops, I somehow got blue in there. Let's get some white back. Not somehow, it's from my palette that's all over the place there. So I've got a little C stroke there, and now we'll just soften it. Now I'm cleaning off my brush, I'm taking some white, if I can find some, 
And can you see, I'm just going to do a little white, it's like a little comma stroke. I'm starting, press a little bit, pull it up, and it's just like a little curved stroke. I'm going to do that like in the upper right-hand side of each one. It might not show up much on the yellow, but on the dark colors, it really shows up nice. You see, that makes it look a little bit more like a little rounded ornament. Uh, and then they could get a little one on these little guys. Now it's so tiny, you don't have to worry about little perfect strokes. Just give them all a little bit of a white highlight. I'll hold this up for you in a second so you can get a little better look. Just a little white highlight on your lights. I'm not worrying about if it's on the right or the left. They're so tiny, it's not that important. We just want a little highlight. And again, it's showing up better on the dark colors, of course. That one um, was a little big. It's kind of taking over the whole little light bulb there. But these are little things I can fix later, and then when I go back to fix them, I don't notice them anyway, so it wasn't obviously important. So a little highlight on them. I did go ahead, and you could do it with your marker, or you could do it with a paintbrush, and you know how they would have like a little place where, the, where they would screw into? I'm just putting little... It's almost like a little rectangle or a little line. Just a little, what would they call that? It's just a little cap like with it. Attaches them. And you can just put those in if you need to in some places. Again, this is not an important little bit. Some of them are just floating in thin air here. They don't even attach to the wire. Loving the paint markers though. They're great for signing your name. Any little details you don't want to paint, or if you feel like your hands are a little shaky, or um, you have like tremors of any sort, this is a great solution. So can you take a little closer look to my lights? Um, little blobs of color, kind of a little egg shape almost. Little white dots for the highlights. You can barely see, but I just put like little black caps on some of them. And... Don't mind my blue that is so see-through there, but you get the idea. And that's about it, you guys. Like, it wasn't, that wasn't too painful, right? I don't know where all the little black bits are coming from on here. If you look now at your sand, you might want to just brighten it up a little bit. You could certainly take your white now. I'm definitely getting clean white because the white in my palette is a mess. You could take some white now. That's, this brush is... Those are really too stiff, but you can pat it on a little heavier now, especially if you want to go on the upper edge of the sand where it's, you know, in front of the pine, <laughs> pineapple, in front of the palm tree. I make it a little highlighted there. And any way you might want, can you see it looks a little bit more like the sand's walked in? It's kind of got some shadows and some highlights and things. You can just add that in. I wouldn't go back with any of the darks, but I would put a little bit of the lights in there. So... Um, some of you guys are still here with me painting along. Thank you. And um, for those of that you haven't painted it yet, while you're watching my replay here, certainly reach out if you have any questions or concerns. I'm going to quickly look at the comments here because um, in case there's anything. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, oh, Sandy. Hi. The polar bear penguin. Yeah, those are pretty cute. Those were I did last winter, and we are going to do some more of those. Um, you can't see them now. You could see them earlier when I had the camera facing the other way. Um, so that is that. I'm going to turn it around. I know you're going to turn it upside down and everything, but I kind of like to see you guys a little bit before um, oh, the big hand, um, before I go, because I know I can't really see you, but it feels a little bit more like I am. There's the polar bear that Sandy was talking about. I have some bird paintings, um, some little winter cabin painting there. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me. I'm so sorry about the glitches. I hope uh, most people found me, um, and I will go download this now. And so this is our little guy that we finished tonight. I will be filling in my sky a little bit, but I think he's pretty cute. Oh, you know what? We didn't. There's one little thing. Sorry, guys. There's one little thing I would do now, and it's those little white lines that are around the feet because they're in the water. And I'm just going to take my little liner brush, a little white paint. You'll see them on the painting, uh, the sample anyways, but let's see if I can do this this way. Right around 
they're I'm doing it kind of backwards, but they got these little what would you call it, where the reflections are? So between the reflections and the actual legs here, I get a little bit of white, and then I kind of make it a little bit like they're making little waves if they were walking. So you can see those little lines. You'll see it better. And oh, sorry, that's that's a little too close. Um, you can see it better there. See the little lines. Anywho, thank you guys. Merry Christmas. I might see you on the page before then, but if I don't, have a Merry Christmas. Show me your paintings. I would love to see them. And um, everybody have a great night. Thank you again. Bye.